But what are you doing, Basavayo? Well, like I told Max, I was trying to cut my way through your wire because I want to get out. What do I remember most about my childhood? Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, if you want to know. That's great. <laughs> Back in the 1960s and 70s, Hollywood experienced a remarkable shift, marked by an air of coolness that had a lasting impact even to this day. This shift was largely due to one man, Steve McQueen. McQueen wasn't just any actor. He had a special charm and charisma that captivated viewers on the big screen. He became famous for playing roles that were a bit rebellious, such as in Bullet and The Great Escape. These roles helped cement his status as a legendary figure in the world of cinema. McQueen represented more than just an acting talent. He symbolized a time in film when being different and nonconformist was celebrated. However, McQueen's life in Hollywood wasn't all about glamour. His strong personality and his relentless pursuit to excel in his performances often caused tension and disagreements with some of his fellow actors. Today, we take a closer look at what some of McQueen's co-stars really thought of him. They openly shared their honest and sometimes critical opinions of this famous star, giving us insight into a side of Steve McQueen that wasn't commonly known. Through these behind-the-scenes stories and anecdotes, we get to see McQueen as a more complex person, quite different from his public image. We explore why McQueen wasn't always favored by other actors. For instance, James Garner, who was known for being friendly and easygoing, had quite a contrasting personality to McQueen's. Garner was very straightforward in his criticism of McQueen's acting style and its impact on the movie industry, describing it bluntly as the kiss of death. Then there's Paul Newman, another big name in Hollywood. Newman had a different but equally pointed way of expressing his views about McQueen, using a single, harsh swear word. This shows the underlying rivalries and complexities that existed in the film industry. While audiences often saw Garner as a noble and honest hero in movies, his real-life comments about McQueen reveal a different aspect of their professional relationship. The Great Escape is an ideal example to illustrate this. In this movie, McQueen's signature cool attitude was on full display. But what went on behind the scenes told a different story. His methods and behavior, both on and off the camera, sometimes caused frustration among his co-stars. In this World War II drama, James Garner co-starred with McQueen, with Garner playing Henley to McQueen's hilts. Garner, known for being outspoken, did not hold back on sharing his thoughts on McQueen's approach to acting. Garner compared McQueen to another well-known actor, Marlon Brando. He observed that McQueen, like Brando, could be a strong and challenging presence on set. However, Garner went further in his critique, boldly saying that McQueen was more of a movie star than a real actor. He believed McQueen was more focused on keeping up the tough, masculine image than on truly getting into his characters. Garner felt that while McQueen's style made him popular with audiences, it was a major drawback in his acting skills. Garner's blunt statement, that's the kiss of death as far as I'm concerned, highlighted his view that a good actor should be able to completely become their character, making the audience forget that they're watching an actor. But McQueen's challenges weren't limited to his acting approach. His behavior on set also often became a topic of debate and criticism throughout his career. In an interesting story, James Garner shared an incident about Steve McQueen during the filming of The Great Escape. McQueen was close to walking off the set because he was unhappy with his role in the movie. To resolve the situation, Garner decided to have a talk with McQueen to understand his concerns. McQueen was dissatisfied with the way his character was being portrayed in the script. He thought his character didn't seem heroic enough, which was important to him. McQueen had a reputation for being quite stubborn, something Garner knew very well. Despite this difficulty, they managed to come up with a solution that satisfied McQueen. To address McQueen's concerns, the director implemented significant changes. He introduced thrilling motorcycle stunts and altered McQueen's character arc in the story. McQueen's character transformed into a courageous individual who risks getting captured again in order to collect and share vital information. Throughout the filming process, there were many highs and lows, but Garner and McQueen maintained their friendship. This demonstrated Garner's ability to navigate tricky situations without letting his ego get in the way. This was a rare quality among Hollywood stars, particularly when dealing with someone as challenging as McQueen. Garner's approach to handling McQueen provides an interesting look into the complex relationships and interactions in the movie industry. Another prominent figure in the cinema world who had a complicated relationship with McQueen was Yul Brenner. Brenner was a well-known actor in the 1950s and 60s, famous for his roles in movies like The King and I and The Ten Commandments. During his peak, 
he often clashed with newer actors who were trying to establish themselves. Their rivalry became evident on the set of The Magnificent Seven from 1960, where both Brenner and McQueen played significant roles. Brenner, already an established actor, did not appreciate McQueen's attempts to overshadow him in their shared scenes. McQueen, who always aimed to be in the spotlight, would suddenly draw the audience's attention towards himself, away from Brenner. This led to a competitive environment between them during their scenes. To counter McQueen's tendency to stand out, Brenner enforced a rule that McQueen could not ad-lib in scenes they shared. Despite this, McQueen continued to find ways to be noticeable. The rivalry between McQueen and Brenner played a significant role in the production of the film. Brenner, a big star in Hollywood, was keen on maintaining the dominance of his leading role. McQueen, however, saw Brenner's restrictions as a challenge to be overcome, constantly striving to make his presence felt. The filming of The Magnificent Seven was filled with tension, largely due to the ongoing rivalry between Steve McQueen and other actors, particularly with McQueen being the main source of conflict. McQueen was very upset when he discovered that his character had only seven lines in the initial version of the script. To address McQueen's dissatisfaction, the film's director, John Sturgis, gave him some level of influence during the production. However, McQueen unfortunately used this opportunity to try and outshine his co-star, Yul Brenner. McQueen's methods for drawing attention to himself were somewhat immature. For instance, while Brenner was delivering lines, McQueen would engage in distracting actions such as flipping a coin or rattling his shotgun shells. These antics successfully diverted the focus of the camera and the audience from Brenner to McQueen. On the movie set, Steve McQueen often engaged in bothersome behavior. One notable example was his habit of kicking away a small mound of dirt that Yul Brenner stood on. This slight tactic was designed to make Brenner appear shorter when standing next to other actors in the film. The animosity between McQueen and Brenner during the movie's production hit a high point in a particularly notable event. This incident is detailed in Mark Elliott's 2005 book, Steve McQueen, A Biography, which recounts a moment where an exasperated Brenner physically confronted McQueen. This confrontation was impossible to ignore and became a spectacle for everyone present on the set. Reflecting on their strained relationship, McQueen openly stated, We didn't get along. He remembered the incident, noting that it occurred in front of a crowd, with Brenner angrily grabbing him by the shoulder. McQueen speculated that Brenner might have felt intimidated by him, saying he doesn't ride well and knows nothing about guns, so maybe he thought I was a threat. McQueen, known for his rebellious nature, highlighted the contrast in their acting approaches. He commented, I was at ease. He wasn't. With Yule, you're supposed to just stand still. That's not how I work. The ongoing tension between McQueen and Brenner on the set of The Magnificent Seven was marked by frequent disagreements, driven by envy and a strong sense of competition. Robert Vaughn, another actor in the movie, spoke about this conflict in his 2008 autobiography, A Fortunate Life. He observed that McQueen was particularly jealous of the gun Brenner's character used in the film, indicating that their rivalry extended beyond their on-screen interactions. Vaughn described McQueen as highly competitive, always striving to surpass others. This competition between two renowned actors created a strained and competitive atmosphere on set. Their constant struggle for the limelight contributed to an uneasy and competitive environment. Even though they performed effectively together in the film, creating a memorable western, their off-screen disputes became as well-known as their acting careers. In the dynamic era of Hollywood during the 1960s and 70s, another intense rivalry was developing between Steve McQueen and Paul Newman. It was often said that it was mainly McQueen who harbored resentment towards Newman. Their rivalry extended beyond acting and into car racing, adding another layer to their intense competition. Both were avid racers, often guided by Dick Barber from Barber Motorsports. Paul Newman was incredibly disciplined in his approach to car racing, dedicating a lot of time and effort to enhancing his abilities. His commitment really paid off, as he earned immense respect in the world of racing. In contrast, McQueen seemed to be naturally skilled at racing, picking it up quickly and doing very well. Steve McQueen had an innate talent for racing, but this skill became a source of resentment, particularly when he realized that Paul Newman was a formidable opponent on the track. McQueen was convinced that he was the better driver, a belief that only made their rivalry more intense. Their competition was even more captivating, because despite their shared passion for racing, McQueen and Newman never had the chance to race against each other in a formal event. 
This left a lingering question. Who was really the better racer? The professional relationship between Steve McQueen and Paul Newman reached a critical point when they were both considered for parts in the famous movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. This movie was a great chance for them to work together in a film. However, McQueen had a hard time with the idea of sharing the lead role with Newman, particularly over the issue of who would be the main star. Newman was more popular in Hollywood at that time and was expected to be the lead. McQueen felt it was unfair that he might not be the star of the movie. He believed he deserved to be the top spot. In the end, McQueen couldn't accept being second to Newman and turned down the role, missing out on what could have been a major film in his career. After McQueen said no, the role of the Sundance Kid went to Robert Redford. Other well-known actors like Warren Beatty and Marlon Brando were also considered. McQueen's decision not only altered his own career, but also complicated his relationship with Newman even more. The rivalry between Steve McQueen and Paul Newman wasn't limited to the movie Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. It continued, reaching another peak during the production of The Towering Inferno. The Towering Inferno was the only film where McQueen and Newman acted together. Based on the novels The Tower by Sterling Siliphant and The Glass Inferno by Richard Martin Stern, the movie is about the grand opening party of a large office building. The story takes a dramatic and tragic turn when a huge fire starts, endangering everyone inside. The film was very successful, getting a nomination for Best Picture in 1975. It won awards for Best Cinematography, Best Film Editing, and Best Original Song for the touching We May Never Love Like This Again. The film showcased the acting talents of both McQueen and Newman, but it also highlighted their ongoing rivalry and different personalities. In Hollywood, where fame and competition are common, the making of The Towering Inferno is a notable example. This film, successful in theaters, was more than just an excellent cinematic work. It was a battleground, a scene where two famous Hollywood actors, Paul Newman and Steve McQueen, fiercely competed. The set of The Towering Inferno was more than just a film set. It was a place where these two movie industry legends vied for attention. Every day, the set was filled with their competitive energy, making it a high-stakes Hollywood contest. Both Newman and McQueen worked hard to outperform each other, trying to get more time on screen and make a bigger impact on the audience. The tales of Newman and McQueen's rivalry are rich with intriguing specifics, highlighting the lengths that they would go to to be the leading figure on set. Their competition was a mental and willpower contest, with both actors continuously attempting to outsmart the other. This struggle for the top spot often involved clever strategies, with each one using sly methods to ensure that they stayed in the limelight. Steve McQueen's deep desire to be the unmatched star was particularly striking. His obsession with being the focal point led him to count his lines in comparison to Newman's. This obsession drove him to take a daring step. He went to Sterling Sant, the screenplay writer, and asked for an addition of 12 lines to his role. McQueen's aim was straightforward. He wanted to ensure that he had as many lines as Newman to avoid being overshadowed. Their constant drive for equal prominence often created stress on set, particularly when McQueen felt Newman had more lines. This focus on their rivalry was a frequent cause of tension between the two. Further adding to the drama, A. E. Hotner, a well-known writer and friend of Paul Newman, revealed insights into their off-screen relationship. He shared how Newman would sometimes call McQueen a chicken, teasing him for his continuous and minor complaints. This nickname symbolized the tense relationship between the two stars, underlying the pettiness and intensity of their competition. The filming of The Towering Inferno was more than just a movie production. It was a dramatic display of rivalry and clashing egos. Newman and McQueen's competition wasn't just a minor detail. It was an essential part of the behind-the-scenes story. Their struggle for dominance added an element of fascination and tension to the movie's creation making the story of its making as enthralling as a film itself. In the competitive and glamorous world of Hollywood, many viewed McQueen more as a celebrity than a serious actor. He frequently found himself embroiled in disagreements and conflicts during the production of major films like The Magnificent Seven and The Great Escape. His well-known disputes with fellow actors like Yul Brenner were just part of the story. There were numerous other famous actors who harbored long-standing resentments against McQueen. Steve McQueen had a clear vision for himself as an actor. He always wanted to come across as strong and manly in his movies.
This strong desire sometimes made it hard for him to gel with the team-like atmosphere that's usually present on film sets. When we take a closer look at how McQueen interacted with people in the movie business, we begin to understand the complicated aspects of a man who became a legend in Hollywood. His performances were exciting and captivating for those who watched his films, but this same intensity often led to issues away from the camera. McQueen's method of acting and how he dealt with people in the film world tell us much about the potential problems and disagreements that can pop up in the movie-making industry. His commitment to always playing a certain type of character and his forceful personality made him a memorable icon. However, these qualities also caused friction and arguments with other actors and people who made movies. This friction was a reoccurring theme throughout his career, impacting not only his personal relationships with co-workers, but also influencing the kind of projects he chose to be part of. In spite of these obstacles, it's important to recognize the significant effect McQueen had on Hollywood. His acting style and unique approach have made a deep and lasting impression on the film industry. Steve McQueen was a remarkable figure in film, possessing an effortless ability to enchant audiences on screen. Yet his journey in the movie world was not smooth sailing, particularly in his interactions with colleagues. This contrast between his magnetic screen presence and the challenges he frequently faced in working with other actors and directors adds a rich and fascinating dimension to this narrative of his life and career. His story is not just about his fame and performances, but also about navigating the intricate and sometimes difficult relationships within the movie industry. A really good example of this happened during the making of The Great Escape. This movie, which is now considered a classic, was a big turning point in the career of actor Steve McQueen. In this film, McQueen's character was supposed to change a lot. He was meant to go from being just another character in the story to someone who was much more important and heroic. This change was really important for the movie's story and also helped McQueen become known as a great actor. But making this change was not easy. People said that McQueen was not happy with the way his character was being shown in the movie. He thought his role was not heroic enough, and because of this, he wanted some things in the movie to be changed. McQueen was more than just a little upset. He was really frustrated. He wanted his character to be seen as very brave and courageous, and he wasn't afraid to say so. His strong opinions and his demands for changes caused a lot of problems during the filming. Things got so difficult that the director of The Great Escape started to think about making big changes to the movie. He even thought about focusing the movie on a completely different character, which would have changed the story a lot. This kind of disagreement was unusual, and it showed just how much McQueen cared about how his character was shown in the movie. McQueen's unhappiness wasn't just about wanting to be on screen more or having a bigger part. He had a specific idea of how his character should be, and he thought the character needed to be more heroic. He was especially not happy with some parts of the movie, which he thought were silly or not serious enough. This disagreement between what McQueen wanted for his character and what the director had in mind made the atmosphere on the movie set very tense and dramatic. This added a really interesting and challenging aspect to the relationships and work environment during the making of the film. During the golden era of Hollywood, there were many hidden stories and little-known facts of what was going on behind the scenes. Steve McQueen was deeply involved in this lesser-known side of Hollywood. This part of Hollywood wasn't known to the general public. It was a side that showed a variety of experiences and interactions that happened away from the camera. It's a world that shows even the most famous celebrities had to deal with big problems and disagreements. Now, Steve McQueen's life was not just filled with drama on screen, but also off screen, especially after he passed away in 1980. His death led to a lot of controversies regarding his estate. McQueen wasn't only an amazing actor. He had become an icon. His name, image, and the rights to use them became very valuable. This added a complicated chapter to the story of his life and career. Who would control these rights became a big issue, showing how much influence McQueen had left in the film industry. His legacy, tangled in legal and money-related disputes, reflected the challenges he faced while he was alive, showing how significant he was both on and off the screen. After Steve McQueen's death, there was a big legal battle over who should control the rights to use his image. McQueen was a symbol of being cool and rebellious. This image continued to attract fans even after his death. Many businesses wanted to use his image to sell their products, trying to link themselves to his iconic status. McQueen's estate, 
mainly handled by his children and other heirs, was constantly fighting to protect his image and legacy. They were fighting not just to keep his memory alive, but also to make sure his image wasn't used wrongly. They faced various companies and people who tried to use McQueen's likeness without permission. These legal battles showed their commitment to protecting McQueen's legacy. One famous legal case happened in the early 2010s when McQueen's estate sued a well-known car company, Ferrari. Ferrari had made a car named McQueen, trying to use the actor's love for racing and fast cars for their benefit. This led to a big legal fight. But the challenges did not only come from outside. Inside the family, there were disagreements about how to manage McQueen's estate. Their heirs faced a tough decision. How to keep McQueen's legacy true to who he was, while also benefiting from the ongoing interest in his life and career. Despite these problems inside and outside the family, the estate worked hard to keep McQueen's memory alive in a respectful way. They supported documentaries about his life, endorsed products that matched his image, and controlled how his story was told. This careful management made sure Steve McQueen's legacy was kept safe and celebrated in a way that honored his amazing life. Do these parts of his life change how you see him, or do they make his career even more interesting? We'd love to hear what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more.